President Biden will travel to Buffalo tomorrow to visit with the victims and families of the racially motivated mass shooting, which claimed the lives of 10 people and seriously injured three others. The grieving community finding it hard to really come to grips with what happened over the weekend. This morning, we're joined by Governor Kathy Hochul to discuss what is being done to help her hometown. Governor, thank you so much for being here under such a tragic circumstance. And, and uh, thank you for allowing me to have the opportunity to, first of all, thank so many New Yorkers who have extended their love and support in any way they can. It was a quintessential New York weekend when people saw tragedy. And just like a lot of love came to Brooklyn after the subway shooting and continues to come uh, from all over the state to make sure that we protect people in our streets of New York. Also, uh, I felt the return love up in my hometown. Yeah. This literally happened minutes from where I lived, uh, 10 minutes from my home. Right. And, uh, Right, the community's in a lot of pain right now. Yeah, you know, and Governor, I, I, I did want to begin, obviously, with extending our condolences to you in particular, because, like you said, you are from Buffalo region, right? Along with so many uh, who are just sending their thoughts. And I want to also talk about what we saw play out yesterday alongside State Attorney General Letitia James. You guys um, both went to a church service. It was a packed house there inside. Obviously, the emotion was very high. What would you like to see happen next now? As the community is mourning, what are the next steps? Well, the next step was when President Biden called me and says, you know, Kathy, what can we do for New York? I said, Mr. President, if you came to Buffalo, that would be such a powerful statement that this is a community that matters, that you care deeply about the victims and their families. And so I was really grateful that he accepted the invitation. He will be arriving tomorrow in Buffalo, and that is going to be an important statement. But also, we are deploying resources, almost $3 million from the state to help the families, the community heal. We'll be using it to make sure all expenses are covered. I want to thank Reverend Al and the National Action Network for offering to pay for the funerals for these families. Yeah. Uh, they're extremely generous. We also have mental health support workers on the ground, and we're also taking lead in major parts of the investigation yeah. outside of Buffalo. So we're very involved in this. But uh, I'm here in person because yeah. uh, I, 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 I give a good hug. And, and this community needed a hug from me, and I needed a hug back mm -hmm. from them because our hearts are broken right. as uh, any family that has to deal with the specter of gun violence, whether it's racially motivated as this or just the random violence that destroys families. Uh, throughout the city of New York all the time. So, uh, you know, we can't just ignore this. These are individuals right. who lost. It's, it's not just the number 10. It is 10 people who have lives, unique characteristics, and we honor all them. Today. And families, and, and families as well. You know, Governor, you mentioned the investigation, so I want to pivot to that right now because the shooter here was allegedly able to go and purchase this AR-15 rifle legally. Do you know, Governor, where that gun was purchased, whether a background check was done here in this case? Yes, in New York State, we have the toughest gun laws. You cannot buy a gun without a comprehensive background check. And this includes investigations from your background, interviews with neighbors. I mean, there's a whole host of things that have to happen in order to buy a gun in the state of New York. But under New York gun laws, this particular gun was legal, but not the high capacity magazine that led to the mass, the military style execution yeah. of people because of the color of their skin. That's what this was. It was a racially motivated hate crime. But what he was able to do, he lives 10 minutes from the border of Pennsylvania. So it is no effort to go to a gun show or a store in a state like Pennsylvania that has less restrictive laws than we do, buy a magazine that has capacity for 30 bullets to be discharged. And that's exactly what he did. That's why when I spoke with the president as well, what else yeah. we can do? We need a national response because we can do what we can in New York. But if right. other states you know, continue to allow this, which is why we have a gun interdiction task force I started months ago to watch our borders, work with nine other states, work with NYPD as well. But, you know, we're making progress, but it's just not enough. Yeah. And, and there's urgency here. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I often feel like these are the conversations that play out almost every single time there is a mass shooting. And hopefully, hopefully there is change here, Governor. But, you know, the shooter had allegedly made school threats last year. New York, as you know, has this red flag law. For those who don't know, it could force people to surrender guns if they are, in fact, a danger. Why wasn't that used here in this case? I'm investigating that right now. Obviously, it happened last year, and I'm going to find out exactly what happened. But the knowledge we have right now, and I'll have the state police respond more thoroughly, is that the student at the end of the school year, there was a, pro, there was a class project to talk about what you're going to do next. He said he wanted to murder and commit suicide. 
And that immediately triggered the state police coming there, taking this young person, taking him for mental health evaluation, which did occur. And then they released him because he said he was only kidding and there was no other evidence uh, of actionable, uh, dis a decision that would have led to uh, action. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying that that is my first questioning of what happened there. And I want to find out you know, what happened with the application of our red flag law, which I championed around the state that when there's early warning signs that someone could do harm to themselves or others, there has to be an examination as to whether or not there is our guns in a house that this person has access to. But after age 18, you can legally buy right. these yourself. Whether or not it's in your parents' house, it can be something you purchase yourself when you reach that threshold age, which is what happened in this case. But we have a lot more questions. I assure you, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm sure you will, Governor. You know, this was a well thought out, planned attack. This 180 page manifesto written looking at previous mass shootings, really explaining the reasoning behind targeting a predominantly black community. That manifesto posted online. Do we know, Governor, when that was posted and, and if it was flagged? I'm. We have asked that question. We're getting conflicting information. Uh, when it was flagged, it may have been just you know, the day of or right around that time. It wasn't out there for a long time. But the problem is, is that he literally copycatted language that had been put forth in the manifesto written by the mass murderer who killed 51 people in New Zealand at Christ Church. So we know that that language is out there in the Internet. It's accessible to all these hate groups, and they're sharing it. And this is a virus that's spreading quickly. I mean, the white supremacists of yeah. the past wore hoods and rode on horses. You couldn't tell who they are. Now we can't tell who they are because they're hiding under the mask of the Internet. And we have to be much more aggressive in holding companies that provide these platforms responsible for content and taking it down the second it appears. There never should have been a more than a second when the live stream of a military style execution of innocent Buffalonians occurred, that never should have been able to be replayed anywhere. And I want to have the opportunity to sit there and look in the eyes of these companies, yeah. CEOs of these companies, say, what did you know? When did you know it? And what are you doing? You have to convince me you're doing everything you humanly can to make sure that this hate speech is not spreading. But it's also being mainstreamed by members of Congress and on cable news networks. Mm. And that is what's so disturbing to me. It's not just in the underground, the dark web. It is now percolating up into the, yeah. the psyche of others. And this is where I'm calling on every elected official in this country to call it out yeah. and shame yeah. these, back, these people so they can slither back under a rock where they belong. Governor, I, I can hear the frustration in your voice and the passion in all of this right now. And I know we're out of time, but I want to squeeze in one more question about those tech companies because they play such a factor, not only here in mass shootings, but in the influence of our youth, right, and our teenagers. What... I guess moving forward, can you do with the tech companies? Is it calling up the leaders and getting them all into a room and having a roundtable discussion? I'm having those conversations because, yes, I mean, there are federal laws that protect it. I'm a lawyer. I understand. I worked in Washington. I know this space very well. And there's First Amendment rights. I understand all this. And I will never trample on the First Amendment. But that being said, they are now the purveyors of this information. Even unwittingly, they are, they're the ones that are creating the platforms. And they have a moral responsibility and ethical responsibility. And I think there should be a legal responsibility, but they are protected by federal laws that we have to be talking about. So the Internet absolutely could be a force of good, but look how it's being hijacked by evil forces that lead to the slaughter of people, a racist domestic terrorism act conducted by white supremacists. And where did it all start? Where did this information spread? Where did the language come from? It came from these platforms. That's why we have to have these conversations and do everything we humanly can to stop it. Governor Kathy Hochul, I appreciate your time this morning. I know you're very, very busy, but thank you for making the time to discuss this. And thank again, you very much. Our condolences to the Buffalo community and New York as a whole. <laughs> Governor, thank you.